Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Tuesday sketchbook study video. I am so excited about today's video because it's all about surrealism. So this video I've actually already finished and published once, and that was yesterday. Um, but I was super, super sick when I did it the first time, and as you can tell, I'm still recovering from my voice. Um, but I wasn't happy with it, so. so I took it off of YouTube, and this will be the final, we're hoping. I'm really excited to show you what I did with my two little pieces in the sketchbook this week. Um, they turned out really interesting, the second one more so than the first one. So I'm excited to see what you guys think. Surrealism is weird, guys. It's so weird. Um, I've got cat hair stuck to my face. <laughs> Alright, let's start this time lapse and we will continue talking about the facts during it. Okay, so surrealism is a 20th century avant-garde movement in art and literature, which sought to release the creative potential of the unconscious mind. Um, and some of the most well-known visual artists for surrealism are, of course, Salvador Dali, number one, Jean Arp, Max Ernst, and Man Ray. Okay, so like I just said, um, it was a literary movement. It actually originated as a literary movement in the late 1910s to early 20s. I found this to be so shocking. I don't know why. I just always assumed that um, it was purely a visual arts movement, but apparently I was wrong. Um, the founder of the Surrealist Movement. His name was Andre Breton, and he was a poet and critic. And um, him and his colleagues, they started this movement because they were super interested in the studies of Freud. So Sigmund Freud was focusing on the meaning of dreams and the unconscious mind. Freud actually believed that we disguise disturbing impulses and um, s disguise disturbing impulses and images by substituting more acceptable symbolic objects to stand in for the disturbing content in our dreams. So instead of scaring the living crap out of us while we're sleeping, our mind takes those disturbing images and turns them into everyday objects and other symbols and puts them into our dreams so that they still mean the same thing but the content is less disturbing. Okay so in this painting that I'm doing right now this is actually based off of a dream that I've had. Um, I've actually had it a few times and long story short I walk into this building that looks like Washington like the Washington Monument and I get trapped in a bathroom and the bathroom turns into like an insane, insane asylum. Long story, it's terrifying. So anyways, I took all the basic shapes from the beginning of that dream and simplified them. And that is what this painting is. So instead of the Washington Monument, I've got this like really basic oval cylinder shape and then these lines around that go down towards the bottom are actually the farther ones out are actually a sidewalk and then the thing that I'm painting right now is actually like a pool lake type deal I don't know it's it's freaky but I wanted to give you some background on why I'm why and what I'm painting so Andre Breton and his colleagues were really interested in these studies and so they used these studies to be the basis for surrealism. 
um, surrealism became an actual international political and intellectual movement after Andre Breton published his work, The Manifesto of Surrealism. And once he did, the first visual artists and other writers even um, came to the movement. The first visual artists to work with surrealist techniques, imagery, and ideas were the French artist Andre Mason, or Maison, that sounds way more French, I'm gonna say it like that from now on. German artist Max Ernst, American artist Man Ray, and Spanish artist Joan Maria, Mario. Um, Andre Mason's automatic drawings of 1924, I really wish I wasn't so nervous about putting these pieces into this video, I saw something about copyright that kind of made me nervous. I am still giving credit to these artists for their work and this is an academic purpose so I feel like it wouldn't be a copyright infringement thing but until I find out for sure I'm not going to put them into the um, videos. I'll um, put the titles of the works that I mentioned down in the description so you can go and look them up but you should look up Andre Misson's Automatic Drawings of 1924. Um, they were created with continuous curving lines with symbolic figures that emerge throughout the drawings, which are a result of an uninhibited mind. They're super cool. They're just like random line drawings that as you look, you find more figures and more symbols within them. They honestly kind of remind me of like line contouring. I don't know if you've ever done that, but that was like one of my favorite things that my art teachers would make us do. Um, so definitely go look up those automatic drawings of 1924. Max Ernst, a former Dadaist, and we did that video a couple of weeks ago, he began experimenting with two unpredictable processes called decalmania and grottage. Once I describe these, you're going to be like, oh, I've done that, and I didn't even know what I, I didn't even realize I was doing it, but decalcomania is the technique of pressing a sheet of paper onto a painted surface and peeling the sheet of paper off. I know I've done that. Just layer up some like thick paint onto a canvas, press a piece of paper to it, and then peel it off for the texture. Um, and then grottage is the process of scraping pigment across a canvas that is laid on top of a textured surface. I immediately think of I don't know if you did this when you were a kid, but we would take white copy paper and put it over a leaf and then take a crayon and scrape over it and it would like transfer the leaf onto the paper. Super cool. Um, so Ernst used a combination of these techniques in his piece called The Barbarians. Super cool piece. Putting it in the description. The Barbarians, um, this piece I... When you see it, it's what you think of when you think of surrealism. Um, the figures in it are fighting in like this abandoned landscape. And I found out that it exemplifies the repetitive theme of violence and annihilation found in surrealist art. I didn't realize violence and annihilation were like this repetitive theme throughout surrealist paintings. But um, once I, I saw that fact, um, the more paintings I looked at, the more I saw it. Um, okay, so do you guys remember at the beginning of the video I said the second painting is interesting? Well, there you go. There is a freaking toilet just sitting there on my painting. I don't know. For the first painting, I went the whole dream route. And then for the second painting, I decided to go the whole automatic painting route. And I was sick. And I wasn't thinking about what I was painting, like you're supposed to do. And I painted a tree. It's majestic and weird. And then next thing you know, there's a freaking toilet on my painting. I don't know. Apparently my, my brains were so sick that my head was in the toilet. Pun intended. So, anyways, there you go. So, Belgian artist Rene Magritte who eventually moved to Paris, became a leader in the Surrealist movement. 
He painted erotically explicit objects in dreamlike settings. His work was split between the visual automatism and the new form of illusionistic surrealism that Salvador Dali practiced. So I always thought that Salvador Dali was one of the, like one of like the very first visual artists to hop on the surrealist movement. Turns out not really. <laughs> Um, Salvador Dali didn't actually move from Spain to Paris until 1929, and that is when he made his first surrealist paintings. He expanded on Magritte's dream imagery, and in his work, he added to all of it with a hallucinatory feel and erotic charge. Um, Dali would add uh, Freudian symbols, such as ants, to symbolize sexual desires, to his work. Apparently there's this, apparently if you actually read Freud's studies, you can find all these symbols. I looked and looked and looked and could not find um, the exact symbols listed out and what he believed symbolized what. Um, so if you find it, let me know because I'd love to figure all that out. But Breton, the poet critic, he actually praised Dolly's representation of unconscious minds in his second manifesto of surrealism. At the start of World War II, the organized surrealist movement dissolved in Europe and found renewal in the United States. And that's when Breton, Dolly, Ernst, and Maison and others moved to New York City. Surrealism's surprising imagery, deep symbolism, refined painting techniques, and the dislike of the conventional has influenced later generations of artists. I mean, look at me. I'm an artist, and I've just been influenced by surrealism. I love this movement. I had so much fun researching it. I'm so excited about all that I learned, and I'm surprised by how much I had a misconception about I hope you guys learned a lot and I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you go out and do this sketchbook study. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, drop a comment down below because I'd love to hear if you guys were as shocked as I was to find out that Salvador Dali was not the founder of Surrealism. Like, what? Was it just me who thought that? Was it? Don't forget to check out my social media accounts, Instagram and Facebook, both of which are Artwork by Payton. And also don't forget to check out my website, www.artworkbypayton.com, where you can find all of my paintings for sale. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I will see you Friday, and then again next Tuesday. Bye, guys.